Well, welcome back. It's Steve Campbell here with Travis Moss, continuing our conversation uh, that we've been having over the last three months, truthfully. And today we wanted to talk about uh, the idea is that life is not a competition and that we honestly just need to lose the measuring stick. So, Travis, I'm going to throw it to you and and you and I can just have a very real conversation as real people. Yeah, so I think that we we've talked a lot about, you know, at the beginning of this when the market was crashing, um, not get, not panicking about your balances. Everything's going to be OK. And, you know, right. markets have mostly come back and they'll probably be volatile. But, you know, we we tend to use the amount of money in our account as a measuring stick. We talked um, a week or two ago about opportunities and finding opportunities coming out of this, whether you always want to start a business or change your career or something like that. Yep. Um, you know, let's and that is really about what is important to you, what 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 creates value to you, right? And and sometimes we have to go against the grain. Sometimes, you know, we have to stop comparing ourselves to everybody else. Where should I be? Where am I supposed to be? What does the internet say I'm supposed to be doing? They, you know, what's the news channel say I'm supposed to be doing? We just have to lose those measuring sticks and we have to stay true to ourselves and 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 what does that mean? So, you know, I'm awfully inspired a lot of times by things that I read um, or um people who have done amazing things and uh, uh, some of the context, the way that they're able to put some of those things in context. So I thought it'd be fun for us to um, give some words of wisdom back and forth today that that really are from other people that we're just kind of sharing, recontexting and sharing. Um, but just talk about why these things are important, because I think that they'll help us all maybe reflect a little bit more on um, cutting out some of the drama not worrying quite as much about stuff we can't control. Yeah. So I'll start it. Sure. So, so my first quote, I actually cheated. I put a couple quotes together. Um, Savage. <laughs> to collaborative team members, com- completing one another is more important than competing with one another. So completing is more important than competing. The biggest competition is myself. I am not looking to follow others or pull them down. I'm planning to test my own boundaries. So this really resonated with me because I think everything it seems like when you look online or you you hear the news or anything like that is always about who's number one, who's the best, the biggest economy, the most jobs, the worst unemployment, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's always about the five best things, the five worst things. You know, it's it's always about winning and it's always about me- and what is winning? That's measuring yourself against all the other contenders, right? Yep. And yep. while that is important in some aspects of our life, I think it can be, it can over dramatize our lives in a way that we sometimes compete with the very people that are the ones who lift us up yep. and can make yep. us better. You know, I read a book recently and they talked about, you know, what they referenced as worthy adversaries, you know? Don't look at your competition. If, if the competition is really good and whatever you're doing, whether it's business or sports or, you know, work, whatever it is, if the competition is really good, instead of looking at that as evil or bad and you got to break that down, look at it as that makes me want to get better because I want to be as good or better than that. And use that to push yourself, to make it worthy of your time. Right. And so I think that that just gets to your own boundaries. I'm going to push my boundaries. It's, it's about me becoming better, you know, overall. It's not about other people, you know, it's not about taking down other people or being better than other people. And I, and I you know, it, I just think that that's a good kind of pace setter for everybody when we're thinking about everything that's going on in the world today. Um, if we all try to work better together and like if we try to complete each other, right, right if we try to put our strengths with other people's weaknesses to lift others up and allow others to do the same for us. Think about how much further we can get. Yep. Well, and it it seems like so far 2020 is the year of either defining or redefining who we are as individuals uh, because we've all been smacked in the face with things that I don't think any of us were prepared for. You know, it started off in our videos that the investments that we all had, uh, we're on a roller coaster, and then it was. So you're talking about your money is at stake, and then the second thing you're talking about is a world pandemic. So now your health is at stake, and now you're talking about racism, and now truthfully your heart and soul are at stake, and it just kind of feels like each one of these 
events, things. I want to make sure I'm given proper, you know, place to what they are is really testing all of us individually into to what do I actually believe? What do I value and what do I stand for? And I guess I will cheat like you did and combine a couple of uh, quotes here. Um, the first one is just be yourself for everyone else is taken. Um, you are you are who you are for a purpose and a reason. Um, so just be true to yourself. And the other one is um, to do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, just do better. And, I, you know, if I think about those two things, you know, you have yourself as an individual that you're constantly trying to work on and define, you know, who am I? Uh, if you are have a significant other, married, have kids, now you can kind of draw another circle, which is my family. What is my family defined as? What are our family values? Um, then you can draw basically another circle, which is then what is our community and what does our community stand for? Um, and as much as, you know, we talk about um, individuals and being who you are, um, there's a lot that we can do as a community that makes us who we are too as well. And so, you know, I know for me, I just uh, was able to talk to a number of friends over the last couple of days. And I think everybody is is trying to make sense of of everything that is happening um, because it's not just one thing. It's culminating that people have been quarantined for for three months and the emotional toll that that's taken on people not being able to socialize and see their friends and maybe they've uh, lost a job and so part of their identity is now stripped away. So you throw this whole incident with, you know, George Floyd and what's rocked the nation over the last week on top of that. And it's a lot for people to emotionally really make sense of. Um, and then when you see things on um, television, because we're in a world where everything is immediate. So whatever's happening in downtown, I get alerted on my phone and I can watch it live. There's no separation anymore to really digest what is it that I'm experiencing. It's just you're flooded with information and images and people's opinions constantly that I think I think truthfully, a lot of us have lost my own opinion, you know, and, and it's easy in conversation to say, well, so-and-so says, and it's like, well, what do I think, you know? And so I have found personally that this, uh, I'm a big journaler. I've talked about this in other videos. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about my own thoughts. It's a, a term called metacognition. Uh, my, my, my minor in college was in psychology, and it's basically the idea that you are thinking about what you're thinking about. And you step back. And so when a thought comes to your mind, whatever it is, then you step back even further and go, why did I just think that? And was that for me? What was that from? And you try to make sense of it. So I think the more that you can go deeper into who you are, then the more consistent you can be in, in the person you're supposed to be versus what other people are telling you. Yeah. So the next one, um, uh, there comes a time in life when you have to let go of all the pointless drama and the people who create it and surround yourself with people who make you laugh so hard that you forget the bad and focus solely on the good. After all, life is too short to be anything but happy. Um, I, I think that, you know, with a lot of what you just said, I, I think that people can get overwhelmed, right? And it's hard to stay positive and not get depressed um, because we kind of, in a lot of ways, I think good people right now might feel helpless and, and, and maybe outside you like they don't have the control like they we normally would think that we have over what's happening next um and i think that part of that too is the flood of it seems like everybody's on edge because when you turn on the tv or you listen to the radio or something like that um you, you know the, the the loud people tend to you know um overshadow everybody else and they tend to be pretty extreme and so what happens there is I think that it's really easy to, to fall down into a hole and think that this is all just, I mean, this is the end. And yeah, in reality, yeah. if you look back at it, for those folks who are older, who, you know, grew up in the 70s and, and things like that, I mean, this is kind of like, it kind of goes in a cycle, this kind of hysteria that we're seeing right now. And the end has never come. It just kind of yeah, you know, it gets addressed and it gets straightened out and it might take time and things like that. But one of the things I think that we can all do is we can really, it's kind of like um, when people say, hey, no drama is allowed, right? Some houses, no politics are allowed because everybody fights about it or something like that. Well, no drama is allowed. I don't want the drama anymore. Leave the drama at the door. Um, you want to talk, have good, solid conversations, um, that type of thing. But, you know, focus on the good that, 
one thing that everybody can do is when you come home at night or like if you're not working, you're just at home, instead of saying, wow, this is really horrible, you know, well, what is actually good? Before you think this is horrible, think about what are the, uh, you know, what are, what are two things that I'm thankful for? What are two things that have gone well today? You know, or if you think it's really bad, put it on the, I call it the crapometer. Basically, how crappy is this today? But, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the absolute worst I could possibly imagine. If it, you know, if, if it comes out of three, then why are you worried about it? Right? right. On a scale right. of one to 10, a three really you shouldn't be just ignoring. It's, it's yep. really not that big of a deal. And so it's, it's one of those things where trick yourself into ignoring the drama and the little stuff that really doesn't matter. You know, focus on the good stuff, focus on the positivity, that type of thing. I think we can all control that. Well, and you just reminded me of a, of a quote that I didn't have on my list, but I once heard um, uh, a mentor of mine say that every person has a plate, a shelf, and a garbage can. When you have something that's good, eat it. When you have something you're just not sure about, put it on the shelf. And when you got something that's absolute crap, throw it in the garbage. And it's a very simple metric <laughs> for uh, how to filter uh, stuff that we hear. And I think, you know, what, I, and honestly, I just come back to my own personal journey as you and I, uh, we, we wear multiple hats. You know, we, we not only have families we provide for, we have a company that we, you know, provide for our employees. We have a community that we are a part of. And so you're wearing multiple hats at each time. And I think what this year has shown me is how to really um, tap into what it is that that I believe in, what I stand for, and really how to encourage myself. Uh, you know, I'm not. You can call it self talk. You can call it whatever. But when you lose the ability to just have a cup of coffee physically with another human being to digest what they're experiencing, you know, you can try to do it on Zoom. So you think about the last several months, we haven't been able just to really just be together as people and do the things that would communally bring us together, break bread, have a meal, share a drink, whatever it is, and talk about things. So it's probably being done either during text messages or on a Zoom call if we're intentional about doing it. But a lot of times we're if we're being honest, we're just kind of by ourselves uh, or with our spouse or whoever, the people that live in our immediate dwelling, you know, um, and trying to really make sense of of what it is that we're going through. And I've, I've just found that the more that I can, you know, have personal time, you can call it meditation, you can call it prayer time, I'm, I'm, you call it whatever you want to call it, um, the more that I can get kind of alone with myself and really... Um, really digest everything that I'm experiencing from a sensational standpoint, the good, the bad, the different, and say, what what was good that I learned today that I need to hold on to or build upon? What was just, as you said, absolute garbage that I just need to just let go and there's no time for that? And then what are some things that maybe have piqued my interest or uh, challenged something that maybe I believe that I'm not an expert in, so I don't want to claim to be? H how can I go seek out that information as you know, especially when you're talking about things like race and um, just other people's stories and what they've been through. I, I can never tell people what they've experienced because that would be foolishness, but I can listen and I can learn and I can try to have empathy uh, and try to understand their story and how I can be a part of that and not just say, Oh, that stinks. But uh, whether they've lost a job due to COVID or whether they're struggling to pay their bills or whether they've lost a family member over this. I mean, there's literally been so much that has happened in four months. If the if one of these things was the only thing, we would still be trying to digest it. But now you've put two, three or four things all on top of each other and said, good luck, go, right? So it's kind of like heightened senses, right? So right. like they, they talk about if somebody loses the ability to see or hear or smell the other senses are they develop differently, right? They, they kind of step up and, and, you know, they, they fill in some of the blanks for you, you know, people who struggle. And, I, and obviously I'm talking out of turn, but from what I understand is, or at least they romanticize it in writings and things that, that when you lose a sense that the other ones a lot of times fill in a little bit better. Um, you know, it's one of those things right now where our senses are so heightened, right? We're, we're, we're so on edge. We're so hyper. We're, we're, we're so, you know, emotionally charged with all this stuff that has happened that even a little thing or a big thing are going to seem much, much bigger than they really are 
you know, as far as we have to react and we have to do something and we have to get going, right? And instead of having the conversation and the rational conversation, I think that it's easy to, to jump to, um, you know, just these are my views and I don't want to hear anybody else's opinions. And, and I just think, you know, as we're looking at this and as we're trying to get through this and as we're trying to rationalize it, and as we're trying to keep ourselves from feeling negative and stay positive, um, realizing that the secret is kind of within us individually. Um, I, I think that, you know, um, one of my quotes here is nobody is superior, nobody is inferior, but nobody is equal either. People are simply unique and comparable. You are you and I am I. Um, and I think that that, you know, I think it's so important to realize the fact we only know what our experiences have shown us, right? And we've, yep. we've only walked in our own shoes. And some of us, when you when you learn about the, where we've come from and the places we've been, it's absolutely fascinating. But we don't spend enough time talking about that. You know, when, normally when you meet somebody, you go up and say, what do you do? Where do you live? Right. It's, it's an it's an immediate measuring stick. Are you a rocket scientist and are you rich? Right. Like it's immediate. Like I, I'm categorizing people when you're a young person. I remember when my wife and I first um, got married and we meet people. The very first question was, do you have kids yet? Every single person asked us, do you have kids? And do you plan to have kids? And then we had a lecture about whether or not we were going to have kids as if it was somebody else's business about that. Right. We were being basically measured based on, you know, whether or not we were going to quickly reproduce. Um, and I, you know, I just think that we should, I, I talked to a guy one time from Hawaii that was visiting a friend of ours and he looks at me and he goes, what do you do? And I go, well, blah. and it was such an off the, like out of, I didn't even know the guy. I didn't even know his name. And I start telling him what I do for a living. And he goes, no, I don't care about that. He goes, what do you do? He goes, for instance, I surf. I love surfing and I love cooking. Right. And I'm like, oh, Damn. what do I do? Not like, what's my job? Right. right. And it's just, it just reminds you again, how do you want to define yourself? Yep. Right. Yeah. Do you want to define yourself based on some kind of, you know, something that they put on Instagram or do you want to define yourself based on, you know, the impression that 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 you make on this world, basically? Yeah. Well, and as you know, I my last kind of thoughts along this is my wife and I just celebrated on Monday our seven year wedding anniversary and we got a chance to um, uh, just go for a hike up in Ithaca and we were literally the only people. It was actually kind of surreal and, and odd at the same time hiking these trails being by ourselves, but it gave us a time. Um, to really talk and think about the last seven years of marriage. And, um, you know, there was definitely seasons of our life where we thought it was the absolute worst it could ever be. And now looking back in hindsight, you can laugh at it uh, because you realized it was it wasn't as bad as we thought in the moment. And I tie that to what we're going to right now, because if five years removed from now, we think back to 2020 and our only thought was our experience, then that's not enough. Because so far we've experienced a market downturn, we've experienced a world pandemic, and we've experienced uh, racism at a level that's been public for many of us growing up that maybe we haven't seen before. My question is just like our marriage, but what did we do with it, right? Did we experience a market downturn and we did nothing different? And then the next one, we're like, shoot, didn't see that coming. That's foolishness. If we experienced a world pandemic that taught us about social distancing and, and having good hygiene and we do nothing with it, when we get sick, can't blame anybody. If we find out that our community is hurting and people are hurting because they've experienced racism, even if we don't understand or even if we do and we do nothing, that's foolishness. So I think just like my marriage, I would think about this year for all of us introspectively and say, what do we do with it? Right. And that's that's what I think our whole videos have been about, whether we've covered money and investments, whether we've covered the coronavirus, whether we've covered this topic. Now, it's there's got to be something that we can do to be better prepared for the next time this will happen, because, as you said, it comes in cycles. It may look differently, but the feeling is the same. The feeling of am I OK? What is going on? That shock. And then what do I do? So this has given us a time to really evaluate how prepared were we for any of these things. And if we weren't, there's no shame. You know, I would say the last thing for me, for anybody is it's, it's OK to just realize maybe you weren't prepared for any of this. I don't think any of us were, you know, and don't try to do too much. If I'm being honest, my sole job right now is trying to keep my children alive, being quarantined 
and do a business at the same time. I can't go do everything that everybody wants me to do or maybe expects me to do. And it's it's would only be detrimental for me to beat myself up for believing I can't be over here or talk to that person. But what are the things that I can do now to better prepare us for the future? And then how can I be intentional about some of those other things? So, uh, you know, my my sole call to all of us would be, what do we do with these things that we've all experienced in 2020? And how can we better prepare ourselves to be part of the bridge that can build a healthier, better tomorrow? And that brings me to my last quote that I had. You like that, buddy? Um, the goal is not to be better than the other man, but to be better than your previous self. That's all I got. So I, but I, I think that, you know, living living in the moment, I, I can tell you from somebody who has worked myself, worked at points in my life, 100, you know, 100 hours a week yep. uh, for a long time. Um, you wake up one day and you're like, what happened with those years? Right. Yep. Because you're so engrossed in them going through the motions, grinding through things um, and thinking about how how scary or how tough times are. And then you get to the other side and you have this black spot in the back of, of, of your history there where you're like, I don't even remember. I was so stressed out and so concerned, and so worried about that. But yet look at how good things have turned out. Things are normally better than they were. Right. Um, Sometimes we have to take a step back, but we have to remember that there are good things that happen every single day, even with all the turmoil going on. And we have to figure out how to cherish those moments. Otherwise, what will happen is we'll auto skip a year and we'll look back and go, that was like a lost year. And you only get so many years. Right. right? So right. let's say you, you're fortunate and you live to 100 and you're healthy the whole time. That's one percent of your life that was wasted because we had too much anxiety about what was going on in the moment. Right. Sure, and sure. and from somebody who's gone through points of like that in my life, I could tell you that's where your regret comes from. Right. Yeah. Your regret comes from missing that time as you as you kind of progress through. And and my last quote is really about peer pressure. And I think it gets a little bit to yours. Um, and I did the same thing. I put a couple to a couple of them together, but never judge someone by the opinion of another. Uh, people are going to love you. People will hate you. And none of it will have anything to do with you. Your self-worth is determined by you. You don't have to depend on someone else telling you who you are. And I think that that's the most important. When you sometimes as an individual say, this is what's important to me and this is what I'm going to do, there are going to be people in your social circle that tell you that you're nuts. You're crazy. Why would you do it? You're risking everything or people are going to hate you or you know, we watch TV and people are talking about other people that they don't even know. And therefore we form an opinion about them. And then we live our lives based on those opinions. Forget all that. Throw that drama out the window. Don't allow somebody else's opinion become your fact. Opinions are opinions are opinions. Leave them out. You live your life and don't worry about somebody else's opinion. If you want to do something different than what somebody else does, you know, if parents want to do something different than what their kids think, you know, they should be doing, that's okay. They're individuals. And if the kids want to do something different, you know, sometimes they got to grow and learn. Right. And they might even be right. It's a different, again, walk in my shoes, you know, type of thing. Um, but I think that we individually need to make sure that we're so, you know, reflecting on ourselves and making sure that our self-worth is determined by who we are as people. And like you said, I think earlier, there are things that you can do. If you look at yourself and say, I want to be greater than this, or I want to be better than this, or I don't think I'm doing enough. And you start with you and what are the little things, little things, little teeny tiny things that you can do one at a time, do one thing a day that makes you feel better about yourself and who you are and, and your place in the world and focus on completing things, yep. right? Focus on the idea of this is not about me versus them. This is about how do I get symbionts, right? How do I get things working together um, that, that, raise everybody you know raise all of our boats because that's the way that you get empowered that's the way that you get ahead in life let's say is by being a part of something that lifts up right and what and it's really hard to do that by yourself yeah. so you number one can't really contribute to anything unless you're true to yourself and unless you're going into it without judgment and you're open to you know let's um 
let's learn, let's get better, let's use yesterday as a benchmark and just try to improve a little bit there, but not using artificial benchmarks, right? Like not using a, it's, I'm defined by how much money I have, or I'm defined by, you know, how many people are on my Facebook page, those types of things. We want to throw that stuff out the window because that's arbitrary. Money comes and goes. Facebook friends, only probably a handful of them you actually even know. So that all that kind of stuff, the social media stuff, the, the, the money stuff, all the stuff that you read about and hear about on TV, you know, all that stuff's arbitrary. What really matters is who you are and what you do. Sure. So a really different topic, but you know, it would it would be silly on our end not to address some of the things that are really affecting people. So we've covered a gamut that from from money to health to just your heart and so it's a lot to to cover all in one video but uh you know i thought it was a a, a very real honest conversation so as always um i know you're you're somebody that in, inspires me so at the beginning of the video you said we look to people that inspire us and i think you know, for you wanting to craft and have this conversation just kind of speaks to uh, maybe giving people a little inside look of some of the things uh, and the values that we hold as a company and how we talk to each other throughout the day and in the real life situations. And uh, so I just appreciate these conversations and I hope everyone else does as well as if we could be of help in any way at all, even if you just need somebody to, to speak to or talk. All right.